In this video, we're going to discuss how a lessor would account for a sales type lease. So the first thing a lessor is going to do when it has a sales type lease is it's going to recognize sales revenue and cost of goods sold. So it's going to lead potentially to some profit on the transaction. And note that if we're debiting cost of goods sold, that means we're going to be crediting inventory. So inventory is going to decrease, and that means that the lessor is effectively getting the item that is being leased off of its books, right? So it's going to recognize revenue as well. And so you say, well, if we're crediting revenue, what would we be debiting? Well, we'd be debiting a lease receivable. Now, over time, we're going to increase that lease receivable as interest effectively accrues on the receivable. It's not that your company is actually receiving an, a check for interest, but we're gonna set up an effective interest table and we're gonna recognize interest over time. And then the receivable is ultimately gonna be reduced when you receive lease payments from the lessee. And at the end of the lease, you're going to be increasing your inventory when you get that leased item back and put it back on your books. So let me show you how this all works with, with an example. So let's say that your company, you're the lessor, and you lease a truck to a lessee to another company for a three-year period, okay? Now that truck is gonna have a residual value of $15,000 at the end of year three, and your company is gonna receive lease payments of $20,000 at the beginning of each year. So you're gonna get three payments of $20,000 from the lessee. Now, your company's implicit interest rate that we're gonna use for the effective interest table is 6%. And so then we could go and we can discount this residual value to the present value. And so it would be 12,594. And then the present value of the lease payments, which are an annuity due. So if you remember our annuity due formula, I've got, I've got it right here. So we're gonna discount that in those, so that's three payments of $20,000 as an annuity due is worth $56,668 in the present value, right? Now, if we add together the present value of the residual value, the present value of the lease payments, we add those together, we get $69,262 as the fair value of the truck, okay? Now that is going to be our lease receivable that we're going to start with. now. It can get a little more complicated when we, we get into, well, is this residual value guaranteed or unguaranteed? And I'll actually go and make an entire video where I talk about guaranteed versus unguaranteed residual values. For right now, let's just assume that the lease receivable is gonna be equal to the present value of the residual value and the present value of the lease payments. That's gonna be the initial lease receivable, which might be different, which might be different from the lease liability that the lessee has, right? Which can lead to some differences in the interest. And I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment. But initially we start with, we have this lease receivable on our balance sheet of $69,262. And on the balance sheet, it would actually be separated out into current and non-current. So current would be the amount of the lease receivable your firm expects to receive in the next year or the operating cycle, whichever is longer. And then non-current would be the rest of the lease receivable. So. When you receive, so this is January 1st, the 69,262, but you immediately receive a payment of $20,000 from the lessee. So immediately the re lease receivable goes down uh, to $49,262, okay? Now, at, after one year, this 49,262, we multiply it by 0 0.06, which was that implicit interest rate, and that's gonna tell us the effective interest on the lease receivable, $2,956, okay? And then our reduction of the receivable is gonna be, we're gonna have the 20,000 reduces the receivable, but the interest, this interest on the lease receivable is actually going to increase the lease receivable. So the net amount, the net change is 17,044, right? And so if we take 49,262, minus 17,044, that gives us 32,218. We repeat the process. We multiply the 32,218 by 0 0.06. That's gonna give us interest receivable of 1,933, but we also had a payment that we received of 20,000. Okay, so the net change is 18,067. That brings us to 14,151. Now, 
you might be looking at this 15,000 and thinking, hey, what's going on here? I thought we were just gonna have lease payments, uh, three lease payments of $20,000. That's true. So this technically isn't a payment, but we think about it as a payment because this is reflecting the fact that you as a lessor are receiving the asset back. You're being given the truck back, right? So the truck is being returned to you. So you're basically gonna say, okay, well, I assume that it has this residual value of $15,000, I'm getting it back. And then you're, you're gonna debit your inventory and so forth, right? So this 14,151, we multiply that by 0 0.06, that gives us 849. And then the net between 15,000 and 849 is 14,151 which when subtracted from 14,151 gives us zero. We no longer have a lease receivable. Let me get to the journal entries and, and show you that. Maybe it'll make it easier for you to understand. Now, up front, before we receive any money, anything like that, day one, right? So January 1st, 2017, we debit lease receivable, we credit sales revenue for that 69,262. Okay, again, that's the present value of the lease payments we're gonna receive and the present value of the residual value. Now. We also debit cost of goods sold and inventory, uh, or well, debit cost of goods sold credit inventory for $50,000. Where did I get $50,000? I'm just making that number up just, just to give you an example, but there's no way you calculate the numbers. You just know for the company, what was the cost of goods sold of the item, okay? Now, when you receive the first payment, so this is, this is the first payment that is being received right here. So you're gonna debit cash and then you're gonna credit receivable. Your receivable goes down because you received $20,000, right? It's no longer owed to you, you've received it. But then, then of that first period, remember we had that effective interest of 2,956. So we credit interest revenue for 2,956 and we debit lease receivable for 2,956. So if you wanted to know for that first year, so if we put together an income statement for the year ended uh, December 31st, 2017, We'd have interest revenue of 2,956, but then we'd also have profit from the sales revenue of 69,262 minus the $15,000, okay? So we add that profit from the transaction here plus the interest revenue, and that would be how much this, this lease is affecting our net income in year one, okay? Now in year two, we again receive cash, we reduce our lease receivable, and then again, we, we take that interest revenue, which is 1,933, and we recognize that as revenue and then it increases our lease receivable. Then the next year we receive cash. This is our final cash payment that we receive, $20,000. But then our lease receivable again goes up. So our lease receivable is, isn't at zero because we still recognize that $849, right? There's still that, that little bit of lease receivable. And then when we actually get the truck back, so, that, so here we had our, our second payment we had our third payment, and then here we, we're receiving the truck. So the truck uh, is, is coming back. So truck received, I'll put here. And we, we assume that the value of it would be $15,000. So when we receive the truck, this is January 1st, 2020. So it's like the first day after the lease is done. So we say, okay, we're gonna debit inventory because we're getting this truck back. And then we're gonna credit lease receivable for the final amount, which says now our lease receivable will be zero but now we've got $15,000 uh, truck in our inventory.